what's up guys, Reese or Foden here. Now we've come to our second tutorial. And um, again using Quixel Suite. Um I've sort of gone through the basics on how to use it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um actually properly uh create a normal map specifically for my model and this is gonna be the final so um this isn't just some YouTube video just to show you stuff. This is actually gonna be a start to finish on how to create it and it's it's not gonna be too big of a job so it's gonna it's gonna go quite well. So um as you can see here actually what I'll do I've just did a little test on it. I will break that connection. I've got colour on my model now, so as you can see, I've got the base colours. Um I think I'm gonna have to make this a bit darker, but um, I'm gonna play around with that when it comes to Marmoset. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some normal maps. So first of all what I'm focused on is this label here. Now that's more of like a fabric y type. So I want to get that detail on there. So if we go to Photoshop, and um, we've got Quixel Suite loaded. So open up Endo. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Well, I've already looked on the internet and i found a nice texture. Which is this one. And first, you know, you don't have to worry about the colours and whatnot. You want to look at the pattern and what detail you can extract from it. Now, I don't know if you can see from the picture... slightly you got these lines coming down with sort of fabric in between as well so that's the sort of effect I wanted so I found this because you've got the lines and you've also got the fabric so what I'm going to do now is size that down a bit and duplicate it bring it down a bit just right underneath and because it's mismatched here I'm just going to go ahead and just flip it oops transform flip vertical and then move it up a bit so that's kind of seamless merge those two together and then if we put on our UV snapshot and this area up here is the label Oops. there we go so if I move that into position now where I want it around there um, yeah and then I can s click control T and then size that down a bit and then then I can cut off the edge here. Now as I mentioned before, well I'll get there eventually, so that that's good enough. It's overlapping but that's fine. Um, so then what I can do is, because it's just a picture, click on the picture and convert that to a normal map. There we go. So as you can see, there's not a lot of detail um, so far, you've got the odd gr like bumps and whatnot. So what you can do is you can bring this down. So bring it down to size, size three we do. So yeah, as you can see now, you got these little indents as well. So that would be quite useful. I do want to soften it a wee bit. Um, yeah, that'd be alright. Just just to smooth it all over. Uh, we'll we'll test this all anyway, and then um bring the contrast up a little bit as well as you know I'll, I'll leave it around there see what it see what it looks like and then what I can do is oops file save as target and Wacom normal now let's have a look what it looks like so bump map uh, open up the file uh, tangent space normal and then the bump value plug that normal map in um, leg yeah we're on legacy so as you can see there there is some fabric now one thing you'd have to realize as well is when you create your normal map you'll also create an ambient occlusion map so anything you do in Quixel yeah you can get an ambient occlusion map from this as well which will help to create the shadows in our label so you don't want to overdo the normal because the AO is going to be working with it as well but I do want a little bit more detail on that I, I'm not happy with you know the sharpness of it so maybe bring the softness back a bit contrast up a wee bit let's have a look at that only slight tweaks but this is the whole good thing about Quixel Suite you can adjust to whatever you want, you know, so 
really what what you're making it is yours. That's a little bit better, that's a bit stronger now. And with the AO that should be okay. Now it looks a bit weird because the edges are just cut off. So what I'm actually going to do, actually before I do that, I mentioned that it's overlapping. And I also mentioned in um, what do you call it, uh, the last uh, video that if you merge this you can't edit it. So right now I'm happy with this. So what I can do is I can merge. Yeah. So that's just that one. So I'll call this fabric. And what I want to do is make sure that's not overlapping. So what I'll do, get, grab the magic wand tool, click on the snapshot. Click on the outside so it selects everything. And now I come to select, modify, contract. And I'll leave it about 10 pixels. And then it just sort of indents it a bit. And then I'll click on selection tool, click on the fabric, and then delete. So then that deletes anything that might be slight, oops, slightly in the way and because it's limited to 10 pixels I will just have to go back and I'll just have to clean up these areas here uh, follow it all around so that's just on that one cool and then what I can do now is I can just duplicate this rotate it 90 degrees bring it over here just so we can see zoom in a bit and what I want to do is I just want to extract one of those lines Let's see what that looks like now we've got that zoom in a bit so I can see hmm all right we'll get to that in a sec let's hide that um, and we'll put those on the bottom duplicate it and then we'll also pop that on the top And just double check that it's all in. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's cool. So, what I can do now, I could probably merge those together as it's going to be easier. There we are. And then grab our selection tool, then again, just cut off the edges. There we go. So now, if you unhide the bottom, they interact with each other. And we don't want that. And easy way to fix is because we've got our normal maps for here click control click on the selection right well, that didn't really work did it um, okay duplicate it fill it with a color Ooh, I didn't realize that they're actually alphas okay no problem just gonna be sort of a roughy job then what you're gonna need to do now is just get a, an eraser And then just scrub through and just delete in these top layers. So there's many ways you can do this, fix it, several issues. So this is one of them that you could do, which is sort of a hand, hand done. And then we'll see what it looks like. Alright, yeah, just making sure I'm not cutting off too much sort of see where the you know the line is here okay so if take off that that should now sort of create a sort of like a cutoff point so again file save as target and just overwrite that normal map oops wrong one bump and reload there we go so it's, it kind of cuts it off now I think that's a little bit better um, and the Wacom yeah, yeah yeah that's cool and then what else is there to do the grooves so now we're actually gonna properly do the grooves so I've marked out where I sort of want my sort of shiny area to be the actual touchpad and that's gonna make things a lot easier so like I did beforehand in the last tutorial I will create a shape, create the magic, get the magic wand tool and select the inside of this. Fill it with any color, making sure I'm on my new layer. And then convert that to a normal map. So we're using selection this time instead of picture. 
Alright, so turn on that. Um, I'll bring this at the top here. I'll turn it off and I'll call this um, screen groove. And you'll see why in a sec. Um, just keep that hidden. And then we can come up to here and we can probably actually copy that, put it onto here so we know which one's which. Um, probably merge those together and just leave it fabric. So now we can start adjusting. So we will go to groove here on the bevel options. Turn that off and then we're going to really size that down. Um, I think that might look okay. Let's have a quick check. So it's very tedious where you have to save look, save look, but at least then you sort of get in the most of what it, it looks like. I mean you can do everything rough and then just go and tweak later, but it depends how you prefer to work. I prefer to work like this. So as I can see now, that is slightly big. Uh, that groove needs to be a lot smaller. I'm not happy with that, so maybe if we back it down to one. That go down to one. Maybe zoom in a bit. Right, let's let's bring down the contrast a bit as well. That might help. And let's see. So that's now that's one down. So it's just trial and error. So yeah, slight difference. I mean. Mm, uh, looks a bit better. I'm happy with that. It's only a little one, so because I've actually got this tablet in front of me right now, this is the one I actually own, which is why I've made it because I have real reference and it's I can look at it all angles and it's very helpful. So yeah, I can see that. That's pretty cool. And then I just need the one down here as well, which kind of needs to be exactly the same. So easy fix. This is another one because I'm happy with the the depth and the size of this. I can duplicate it merge it, bring it over, oops, um, control Z, control Z, blend, hard light, I don't know whether this will work once I merge it now, so I've put, I've put it at hard, to hard light, and if I merge it, I don't know whether that's going to stay, yeah it does, so that's cool, so now what I can do, if I just bring that all back in, just grab this selection here, select inverse, delete, and then just need to make sure I got it on the right position. So grab my normal, bring down the opacity a bit, so then I can see where my line is. So this is very helpful for matching up. And I want it in between, so the middle of this should be the middle there. So if I just do that first, I'd say about there, that was cool. And then what I can do is, I can move it up to, well, I can put this back to 100 now, I can move this up to the top and then the same for the bottom, click control T and I can just extend that. There we go, it's cool. So now we've got those two, let's have a look. Uh, how long is this video? 13 minutes. So sorry, this might be longer tutorials and all. I'll try and split them up when I can. Um, but because this is a little object, I'm going to keep it all to one video. So I'll try and hurry up, but not rush it. There we go. So now we've got the indents in. There we are. So that's cool. And then on the base here, you have little dots. So I'll add those in as well. And then I'll round that up. So then you've seen a good a good few techniques and a good uh, usage for pictures and selections and whatnot, and that might be very helpful. So this is the area that has the dot. I'll just look at it in real life. How big is it? So it's going to be around about that big. Uh, again, select the color, making sure it's on a new layer, and then call this um, stand. Um, uh, I don't know, dent, I don't know, it just sounds really rough. I know what that means, so that's no problem. And then position that in the middle. There we are. So then again, uh, the selection, hold control, click, and convert that to a normal map. Now, from looking at this, it's very round. So, right, 
if this happens, so you just need to bring it down so you see sort of the, the outer. That's probably good, and then I can just soften it. Oops, not too much, obviously. Because I still want there to be that bit in the middle. There we go, I'm happy with that. Um, so that's cool, and then I can just rename that to... Uh, sorry, stand dent, that's the mask, so bring that up. And that one's that one. So that's the stand dent. So there's our normal map. And then what I do with these, I select them, whack them in a folder, and call it masks. And then I just usually keep that hidden. And then any more shapes, I just drag them in there. So they're there if I need to create another normal map. Uh, saves doing it all again. So that might be useful for you, especially in the, the whole normal map quicksort process. So I'll just save that now. And then save the normal map. Let's see what it looks like, and then we'll round it up. And I hope these sort of let's model and then these sort of videos are helping because it, I think the best way to sort of learn is to watch it be done. So there we go. Um, I'm not happy with that. Uh, sorry, that's way too sharp. So we can maybe bring the bring the depth down a wee bit and then the opacity. It's only a slight slight dent in so there we go most of it's just playing around but let's see that's a lot better now that's sort of what I'm looking for um, and then I think I will do the same for this I'll indent this actually I will show you this because I haven't really done this before this is something just a bit different sorry about this guys but um, I think it's if I can get it all in one tutorial it saves you clicking on lots of videos doesn't it? Um, so I need to take off normal map so I can see where my thing is. And what I can actually do is I can actually select this actual piece. So if I go into my diffuse map, and a diffuse is a color map. So as you can see, it's just basic colors. I've created all the text and whatnot. Sorry about the old Facebooks, group chats and whatnot. They're annoying. Uh, so um, it's in the rear label, which is the whole lot. I, gr I tend to group things. It's a lot easier. And then come to the very bottom where it will be rounded rectangle. And what I do is I duplicate that and I bring that all the way up to the top and then close the diffuse down again. Don't need that. Actually, no, we do need that. But And then we got here. Yeah, so just rasterize that. Get that selection and then convert that. So then you know for a fact that that normal map is going to be precisely on this shape because you've used it, you've used the same shape. Saves you drawing it out again. Uh, so again, turn on the normal layer so I can see. It's going to be an indent, so instead of going to bevel and groove, you go to slant, and you can just slant that down. Yeah? And then you can just bring that size in a bit. Maybe a bit more. Alright, let's see what that looks like zoomed out, and make sure I've got the sort of right proportions and whatnot. Um, looking at that, that looks about right. So, and then I'll bring the opacity back a little bit. I don't want it too sharp. Now, if you bring the opacity back and you get something like that, it's because below it, the shape that you've used to create this has been popped below. So again, I bring this up, I call this rear label, and because this one is a mask, click, drag over the masks, and then that's disappeared. And they're all in here as if I need to use them again. Um, so yeah, so then call that uh, rear label, and I'm quite happy with that. So take off the old snapshot, save as, and let's give it another go. At least then this way you know the, the way that I like it is you can create your own high quality normal maps precisely how you want it and then you don't have to worry about high to low poly bacon so I don't know if you can see that but there is that indent there now um, what I might actually do is I might just add the green in this indent and sort of have the, sti the sticker start on the inside of it um, oh you know what bugger it I'll just do it now if I get... and then I'll finalize it <laughs> and the easiest way to do that you can look at your normal map. This is just a little technique that I've chosen myself. Go back onto the masks, click on the rear label, and then as I come up here, select modify contract, you know, and then contract by 10 pixels. Oops, that's way too much. So select modify expand uh, by 10 pixels again, or control Z, whichever. Go back to contract and then maybe put about 3 pixels in. So as you can see, bang on, that's there. And then 
you can come onto the uh, the diffuse section, come all the way down to that shape, and delete. Oops, sorry. Uh, if that happens, you right click, select inverse, so it selects the opposite, and then delete. Yeah, and then that way you know for a fact that this bit is on the inside of your normal map. Yeah, there we go. So. Um, t -t 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 it wasn't a normal map I changed, it was a diffuse map, so right click and save the diffuse map. Now for now for the colour map I only put basic colours on um, because the specular the ambient occlusion will help with that. Yep, so there we go, add that, uh, add the diffuse, and there we go, as you can see that's probably more, lo more believable for an indent, and then the stick is placed inside. Yeah, so that's it guys, that is our you know, Wacom normals, you know, with the old grooves, the the pictures for the fabric and and the little dents and whatnot. So hope you like that. Hope you had a bit more of an insight into Quixel and I'll try and do some more if you if you think they're helpful. Peace.